If you're a doctor or medical student in the UK, the thought of leaving medicine for tech has probably crossed your mind. It definitely crossed mine. But that thought would be just that. It usually doesn't make it past a passionate conversation with colleagues at the end of a ward round. That was until this year, where everything changed. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane and I'm a doctor, supervisor at Oxford University and manager at Dockler, a multi-million health tech company that's building the largest and first virtual ward hospital in Europe. Today, I want to share with you why and how I made the decision to leave medicine for health tech. It was the first step in a monumental career change for me filled with lots of worry, uncertainty and fears, but also lots of excitement, opportunity and happiness in equal measure. In this video, I'll share with you how I managed to break into health tech as a medic. But first, why? So why did I want to make the change? Over time, my experiences such as starting and scaling the business, Dr. Shane, as well as my network of friends, which includes lawyers, management consultants and tech company founders, all pushed me to develop knowledge, skills and interests in tech, business development and commercial law. In truth, the decision stemmed from a feeling of dissatisfaction and a want for more out of life. So really a very personal thing. However, I finally got to the bottom of this feeling when I sat down and examined the push and pull factors during the course of making this video. So here are my push factors away from the NHS. I found that the NHS, limited by its resources, was slow to innovate firsthand and slow to adopt secondhand innovation and technology. It was also limited by so much red tape masquerading as patient safety that it was sluggish inflexible and unagile when it came to solving problems. The ever-growing patient waiting lists, for example. All of this made me frequently frustrated, especially when my time as a specialist doctor with nine years of education and experience would be used to do non-patient related tasks, such as filing slides, that in the tech world or a better funded healthcare system will be done in a matter of seconds by a piece of software. Moving on, my day-to-day -day lacked operational, business and commercial elements. I'd often find myself on the way to and back from work listening to podcasts about business development and the commercial world. I had pretty much lost interest in the minute details of medicine and instead cared more about filling huge gaps in general, commercial and financial knowledge, which is a frequent problem for doctors. Finally, my choice of specialty, pathology, which took me further away from patients, acted as a gateway which accelerated my decision to exit medicine. The truly special thing about being a doctor, in my opinion, is the fact that I get to spend most of my day working as a team, talking to sick people, treating them, seeing the results and getting a few thank yous. Once this was largely taken away from me, the idea of leaving medicine was allowed to blossom, which brings me to the pull factors towards health tech. Health tech is built on constant innovation, well, through tech. It's flexible on a personal level, think hybrid working, and on an industry level, meaning that companies within the industry are hyper agile and promote trying new things safely without waiting years for approval from dozens of middle management layers. The health tech space often has a win-win mission, namely improving patient care and saving the taxpayer money. And it also solves interesting and stimulating problems through the use of tech something that really appeals to me. Finally, it fulfilled my business, commercial and operational interests and development. Importantly, it brought me towards my overarching goal, which was to enter the field of commercial law and progress within that career. More on this last bombshell later, but now for my pre-exit strategy, which allowed me to lay the foundation that enabled me to achieve the difficult task of breaking into health tech. So I figured out some of these push and pull factors fairly early on, probably around 2017 towards the end of my third year at medical school. This luckily enabled me to decide, whilst I was still a medical student, that I wanted to have the option of exiting medicine into something corporate once I had finished my F2 year and once I had become a full GMC registered doctor. Using the luxury of time that's afforded to clinical students, I started identifying possible career directions 
for ex doctors. One way I did this was to find ex doctors who had successfully left the corporate world in order to help me identify the spectrum of exit opportunities. After all, before I could start tailoring myself towards an exit, I had to figure out what it is that I wanted to exit to. Now, this process of identifying ex doctors in the corporate world wasn't as easy as it is now. LinkedIn back then was only just starting to become big and podcasts weren't as prolific as they are now. So if I was doing this from scratch in 2024, then I would go straight to LinkedIn and podcasts such as Scrubbed In, which are a treasure trove for identifying successful ex-doctors. I'll link these resources as well as some cool ex-doctors that inspired me below. Anyway, during this fairly laborious search process, I identified that management consulting and health tech had the highest footfall, followed by investment banking, private equity, and commercial law. There were and are, of course, many other exits, but these are the ones that interested me and played to my skills and strengths. After I had identified the possibilities, I then went on to research the individuals within these sectors to see what they had done to successfully exit medicine into that career. From this, I identified fairly unsurprisingly that these successful ex-doctors had industry-related qualifications and experiences that helped them exit. What I mean by this are qualifications and experiences related to leadership, teamwork, project management, client relations, business development, technology, research, and the holy grail, industry experience. Once I had narrowed down what I needed into a manageable list, I actively searched for and undertook high yield projects that fell within at least three or more of these buckets. Here are some examples of things I did that helped me break into health tech. I undertook competitive, selective, and national to international level leadership courses, such as the HLA. I taught and held management positions at reputable universities, such as Cambridge and Oxford, to build communication, teamwork, leadership, empathy, and credibility. I created educational content globally and scaled this into a profitable digital business. I led digital and AI flavored projects both as a uni supervisor and as a pathology doctor in a digital pathology center, making sure that the project would result in growing either my experience or result in a qualification such as a presentation, poster, and or prize. These projects also helped me interface collaboratively with industry partners such as Page.ai and Philips. Other things I had on my radar that I would have done had I not already exited were the Fellowship in Clinical Artificial Intelligence and the Byte Labs Health Tech and Innovation Fellowship. Once I had laid the groundwork, I focused my attention towards identifying specific exits and started crafting my CV and cover letter towards the specific opportunities I wanted. This next part I call my peri-exit strategy. At the beginning of the video, I alluded to my overarching goal, which was to exit to commercial law. Having this overall goal in mind allowed me to take a strategic approach in the search for and identification of my specific exit as part of my peri-exit strategy. This is how my thinking went. I identified that I had the necessary uni and grades to make me a competitive applicant for a training contract at top commercial law firms. But I personally felt that some time spent in industry would give me a real edge, not just to help me enter commercial law, but also to make me a real asset whilst I was there. I knew that my niche within commercial law was likely to be life sciences given my medical background. So I was on the lookout for a health tech company that was small enough to give me horizontal growth, but large enough to provide me some stability. Importantly, the company had to have a mission that resonated with me and excited. One day I was scrolling LinkedIn and I came across my then internet and now real life friend Yas post about his new job at Dockla. This prompted me to carry out some due diligence and found out that Dockler was a post-series A but pre-series B multi-million health tech company aiming to be Europe's largest virtual board provider. This was the perfect fit in terms of size, stability and mission I was looking for. And even better, they were still hiring for the same management position that my friend Yath had been appointed to. Once I had decided it was for me, it was time to apply. So I crafted my CV and cover letter with the help of AI and shot it off. A month later, ironically, during one of the junior doctor strikes, I got an offer for an interview and three rounds later, in about a week, 
I was hired. Now, I'll explain exactly how I crafted my CV, cover letter, and how I prepared for my interview in videos to come. I'll also explain how I managed to keep my training number as a doctor and leave for health tech, in effect, having my cake and eating it. Finally, as I get further along my journey in health tech, I'll share some real life pros and cons of staying in medicine versus leaving for health tech. For example, rewards, perks, and career progression. If by the time you're watching this, these videos are out, then you can click up here. Or if you don't want to miss them, click on the bell icon and you'll be notified when they're out. But that's it from me for today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.